Money, sex, and power. That was the opening statement today from the prosecution in the Lori Vallow murder trial. Prosecutors explained how the case was about those three desires. Vallow is the doomsday cult mom accused of murdering her two youngest children and also her current husband's ex-wife, former wife, believing the children were at least possessed. Prosecutors today outlined Lori's motive for the killings. The defense told jurors that the state must be able to prove that Vallow committed the crimes beyond a reasonable doubt. We know that Kay Woodcock, J.J. Vallow's grandmother, was the first to take the stand as the state's witness. Brandon Boudreau also testified he is the ex-husband of Vallow's niece. He claimed that someone shot at him while he was inside his car in October of 2019. Joining us now is Matt Murphy, former homicide prosecutor. You've had a lot of experience and a lot of wins in court and many homicide trials. What did you make of today's opening argument or statement from the prosecution and the defense? So first of all, these were very abbreviated opening statements. They were short. They were very short. So I think less than an hour between the prosecution and the defense. Um, in a case that has this many moving parts and is as complicated as this is, I, I expected this to be just the prosecution opening to be at least two hours mm -hmm. to kind of map everything out. So it's very attenuated, very brief. and. As a result, there's, we didn't learn, I think, everything that's coming in on the, in this case. We did learn that one of the children was asphyxiated, that right. that was the cause of death. That means strangulation, I'm assuming? Strangulation or, or pillow. Um, also, Tammy Daybell was asphyxiated. They rele released that for the first time. Um, that was one of the big mysteries. We also learned that there was DNA to one of the children found on a pickaxe, which is kind of a, it's a graphic image uh, sort of to leave in the jury's mind. Um, yeah. I also was surprised that the prosecution showed pictures of the remains of the two children. Right. Um, of the little boy wrapped in a black paper plastic bag and of the daughter, and that was particularly gruesome. Is that a good move to, I mean, I'm just not, is that normal to show those kinds of graphic photos in the opening arguments? There are two schools of thought on this. The first is um, the prosecution wants to hit the jury with some with some good emotional um, evidence right at the very beginning. Um, the downside to that, and sort of the second way of looking at that, is to go much lighter on that sort of thing. Um, the, the problem is, is, as a prosecutor, you, when you lead with that, number one, you can actually desensitize the jury, as counterintuitive as that sounds. If they are exposed to those images too often, sometimes by the time they're deliberating, it doesn't have the same impact. You used to wait until the very end of the trial. You know, I, I think that for very experienced prosecutors, they go really light on that stuff, and they don't publish it at all. They certainly don't put it in, in opening statements, and I'm not criticizing the prosecution on this. I think they did a fine job today. but. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a dangerous move. I I didn't try my cases that way. Uh, we did have a peek, perhaps, at what the defense may be, which appears to be it was Chad Daybell and my dead brother Alex who murdered my children. We did. It's nice to be right. On Friday, I told you that they were <laughs> going to go after Alex. Yes, um, he did. And of course, the easy part about that is it's it, it's. You know, it's easy to go after a dead person that can't defend themselves. And the problem for the defense in this is we're talking about an attenuated theory of liability. That is conspiracy or aiding and abetting. Aiding and abetting means if you essentially you do anything to help somebody else commit a crime, it doesn't matter if you're there or not. And same but thing how do you conspiracy. prove a conspiracy if you're if one of the people you conspired with is dead and the other person you conspired with is about to go on murder on, a, on trial for murder himself and isn't cooperating? You, that's where we get to the, to the term circumstantial evidence. Now, it is a myth that circumstantial evidence is somehow bad evidence. Um, so you, you prove it with those text messages, I think. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.